Okay, guys, welcome back. So now I wanted to talk about the uh, the the double pole, double throw slide switch, which we're going to be dropping in line uh, in order to reverse the polarity of the track. Um, when we use terms like reverse the polarity, all we're doing is reversing the current of the track. So that's what this switch right here enables us to do. So. I've got something really roughly wired up here. Uh, none of this stuff soldered. I just wanted to try to get a, a, a working example here to show you guys uh, really how this thing works. Uh, so let me see if I can get this to, to work here. So little, little nudge there. See, I knew as soon as I got it on camera, it was going to. There it goes. Put the switch back, forward, back, forward, back. Middle position's off, so nothing happens at that point. So, So okay, yeah. So with that example, we can uh, we can proceed forward and, and talk about this switch here. So let me let me get some of this stuff out of the way here. Um, so yeah, the, the way the reason I like to wire it up this way is it does offer a lot of uh, a lot of functionality, if you will, uh, to your uh, to your layout as far as you know if you're running. Uh, if you're going to be running operations and stuff, it'll definitely help help with that. Get my face out of the way here. All right, so what we have is we have, uh, well, right now we have a mess. Let me get this stuff cleaned up here. Okay. Okay, so back to our previous diagram. And, um, you know, we, we just talked about how to, how to wire up the, uh, the block selector switches, which are these toggle switches here, these uh, on-off, on uh, position toggle switches. So we, we've successfully uh, been able to wire up our, our uh, basic little layout here. Uh, but now what we want to do is we want to be able to uh, reverse uh, the direction of the uh, locomotives as they run on each different block. So the way we're able to do that is we're able to uh, drop one of these slide switches in line. So if you remember from our last, uh, I think it was two videos ago, when we actually talked about the switch itself, the toggle switch, you know, we talked about the concept of a gate and we talked about how you know when the gates open uh, there's no conductivity of the, uh, of the electrical current there's no connection there to be made so there's no circuit to be established so therefore there's no electricity uh, running through the switch so it's the exact same thing with with these slide switches, the, on, the only difference is, is that we are going to be using both poles. So remember we talked about, we talked about, you know, these three terminals uh, constituting a pole and, and these other three terminals, the ones, the lower ones, you know, they would constitute a pole. So this would be known as a, a double pole, double throw. So remember a throw, the number of throws really represents how many circuits uh, the pole can control. So in this case it's a double double throw so we can control two circuits, right? So uh, as I stated in the opening of this video, to reverse the polarity means really just to reverse the current of the track. You know, if, if you have your track here you know, this is our track and, and for the main line, you know, the current's going this way you know, to, to flip the polarity means, you know, opposite way. Uh, and most uh, power pack 
uh, power controllers, you know, they have some type of uh, reverse, forward reverse switch on there. And as I said in the last video, that, that works fine if you're only running, uh, you know, one engine per cab. Uh, but this will enable us to, uh, you can run multiple engines per cab, but this will enable us to at least reverse the direction you know, if we're running more than one engine off of, uh, you know, each cab. In our case, you know, back to our diagram here, we talked about two cabs. You know, our power controller had two cabs, and we're running trains. At, we're running train A on the main line, which is block one. Train B on the branch, which is block two. Uh, if we wanted to, and this was running off of uh, the locomotive on B was running off of cab two. So if if we wanted to run locomotive C elsewhere on the track um, off of cab two, uh, we can we can do that without the use of this. But say um, you wanted uh, to back up, you know, say you wanted to reverse the direction of locomotive C somewhere say it's in a train yard or something somewhere and you wanted to reverse the direction of it in the train in the train yard so uh, you know how would you do that if if you only have one switch on your controller here that enables you to reverse the polarity or the current uh, you know for each cab so you know if you wanted to reverse you know the direction of C uh, and you didn't did not have one of these in line, and you flip the the reverse button there, then both train uh, locomotives B and C would reverse their direction, and that's not really uh, that's not really the functionality that we want. You know, we want to be able to control each locomotive uh, semi independently uh, from the other one as far as direction is concerned. Now, I say semi independently because they will still be uh, moving at the same uh, rate of speed. They'll still be moving at the same velocity because there's no way to really differentiate between that because the uh, the amount of current that's running through our our system will be supplied to each block. So uh, you know, say we have you know uh, controller two turn one fourth of the way up on power, uh, and controller two is offering power or supplying power to block two, and say you know. Locomotive C here is running on block 15. Well, it's getting the same amount of power as block 2. The only difference is this will enable us to reverse the direction. So, uh, so let's talk about the switch here and how the switch here gets wired up. So, as I said, it's it's a double pole, double throw. So, you know, if we're looking at the switch. This time, let's kind of look at the switch in this direction here. So, if we have our switch here, you know, we have, you know, a pole here and a pole here. It, it's real. It's very close to the same concept as this. There's just a little bit of a difference. Uh, uh, what we're doing is. Uh, what we're doing is we're bringing in the power leads, both the positive and the negative. So uh, let's just take here, let's call this for right now, let's just say this is the positive, this is the negative coming in. Okay, now these would be the inputs right here, these are the ends. All right, so our outs are going to be here coming off these middle terminals here. These will be our outs, okay? Now, it's the same thing. If you think about that gate, it's the same thing. So we have a gate here, and, and say we have a gate here, right? Well, when this gate shuts, this connection's made, and this would be an out positive, right? Just like that. Same thing here, this gate shuts, this would be an out negative, okay? And so, so obviously it takes a positive and a negative uh, in order to uh, to have a current. So, um, 
that's the beginnings of how this thing's got to be wired. The, the only difference, the, the only uh, additional step that we need to take now is we want we want to be able to say okay say this this is a you know if we have our switch like this if we flip it over that would be in the up position right there okay so if you can kind of picture you know the, the positive coming in on this side coming out on this side the negative coming in on this side and then coming out here in the middle on this side okay so that works great but like I said we got to flip the current we got to flip the polarity of the current so the way you achieve that is it's really simple you just cross wire you cross wire you put in a little jumper and you cross wire from this terminal to this terminal this would be a little positive jumper wire if you will and then uh, the same thing on this one you know you've got a little little negative jumper wire that goes from this terminal to this terminal this will be positive excuse me this will be negative this will be positive okay so when when you look at that this terminal is now negative and this terminal now is positive well the same thing if we have a gate here drawing's kind of getting a little cluttered up here but if we have a gate here and we take the switch remember we're in the up position here and we switch it all the way down that gate here is going to be shut and so now instead of having positive coming out on this side we now have negative because the negative line is coming in and it's jumped to this terminal and so this is where our connections make here. So now we have negative going out. Okay? And the same thing on this side for the positive. You know, we have our positive jumper here. If this gate here closes, then we're going to have positive going out. So as you can see, in one scenario, with the switch up, we have positive going out on, the, on this side, and we have negative going out. With the other scenario, with the switch down, all the way down, we have negative going out, right, on that side, and we have positive going out on this side. So as you can see, the polarities flipped, uh, and what that does, obviously, you know, if you've ever run a, uh, you know, uh, played around with a train set, and you know, um, you've you've got one of the the power supplies where it's got a dial and you can turn it both ways, you know, forward and, and reverse, uh, it's, it's very similar, you know, you're, you're flipping that polarity, you're going forward this way, as you turn it back you go to off position and then you keep on going this way and what it does is it flips the polarity and it reverses the current and the track which causes your engine to run the opposite way. So. I hope that my drawing here, it's not a very good one, but I hope it, it at least makes some sense as to what, uh, how the switch actually works. So what I wanted to talk to you about now is actually, you know, we got to drop this in line somehow. So if we come back over here to our, the previous uh, diagram that we drew in the previous video, uh, you know, we had our, we had our, uh, our toggle switch is drawn in here. You know, this was switch number one over here, right? This controlled block one, and this is switch number two here, and this controlled block two. Okay. If you look at this, what do we gotta have for this switch to work? We gotta have a positive end and a negative end, right? So if you look back at this, you might even already be able to see where I'm going with this. Well, we have a positive coming out here, which could be our positive coming in here. And then we have our negative wire going to the common rail from the negative terminal strip. You know, what if we were to hook that up here? So what you'd really have is you would have, if we do our switch, our slide switch over here, I'm trying to make this more legible.
So instead of going straight from the toggle switch to the rail, let's not do that here. Okay, let's run this up to here. Okay, and then instead of going straight to the common rail with the negative wire, let's not do that just yet. Let's run it on around and come in on this side of the slide switch. All right? In, in, positive and negative. Okay, so now it's just a matter of us wiring up the jumpers, you know, from this terminal down to this terminal, and from this terminal down to this terminal. Okay, and then we have our outs coming in. So now we have our out going to the, the positive going to that rail to power the block two. And we have our negative going out to the common rail for block two. And so that's how we would drop that slide switch in line right there. So now what we're able to do with this switch, we can select either cab one or cab two and we can also, whichever cab we select, we can also uh, reverse the polarity of the current coming from that cab. So I hope that that makes sense. Uh, if you guys need for me, if you would like for me to do another one, maybe a, I, I don't know if I could explain it any better. I could sure try. Uh, but if, if you just kind of, you know, maybe pause the video and just look at this diagram and follow it, you'll see how, how I've got it connected up. And I know it's messy and it's got a lot of lines in it and it can, it's a little clutter. It could be a little hard to, to, to understand. But just sit there and look at it and follow my, you know, for cab two, follow it all the way out here. The positive it goes up to the terminal strip comes out slot one, it goes down to the end on the toggle switch. When this connection's made, the out's positive, right? And it goes to the main line, all right? Uh, for switch two, you know, if we were to do uh, the positive for cab two, follow it around, comes in a terminal switch, into the terminal strip, I mean, we come out of slot two, we go up to the terminal of the a toggle switch here. Uh, okay, and we also got to furnish it with power from cab one, or we have to be able to select the power from cab one as well, so it's the same thing. Come into that terminal. Then on our out, we feed the out into the in on the slide switch right here. Okay, and then we go to the rail. And it's the same thing with the negative. So hopefully that makes sense and hopefully you guys can follow that. But, uh, you know, that's how I'm gonna be wiring up the Alberville Railroad. And uh, I'm gonna be starting the control panel. Uh, I might wait on starting the actual, uh, well, I need to start the control panel in the sense that I need to mount the switches and start wiring things up, but I won't be uh, putting the finishing touches on it. So it's, you know, basically right now it's probably just going to be a piece of hardboard with, you know, all the switches mounted. And so, uh, but as I'm doing that, I'll shoot some videos and show you guys how, you know, how the progress is going and how I'm doing it. Hope this helps, guys, and we'll talk to you later.